So the first dashboard we call the site dashboard. So that's yeah. going to be, you know, whatever the name is. It's got your, your name on it. Yeah. yeah. So what do we have in there? Uh, so we've got performance budgets is kind of the big one here. So you go into your settings uh, and you define the metrics that you really care about. And this depends a little bit what mode you're in. If you're in development mode, it's probably all about the size of your CSS, how many images, uh, how many requests, how big those images are, and you're monitoring those things. So jump into your settings, define uh, those budgets, and they'll all appear here on this dashboard. And that's really there to kind of help you guys as a team uh, decide what are the really important metrics and, and use those throughout your project. And when you define those, then you get alerts. So you cross a particular threshold. You can either set a, a hard threshold, say you like 100K for your CSS, or you can define a percentage change. Let me know when my CSS changes by 20%, and we'll send you emails, uh, we'll push it out into Slack, uh, we'll push it out into the various kind of webhooks. And we have kind of a standard set of metrics that you can pick from for these alerts, for these budget thresholds, yeah. uh, amount of CSS or JavaScript or timing metrics. But a lot of times, depending on the website, there's content that's really important that doesn't uh, have a default metric around it. Yeah. And I think the classic example that everyone refers to is uh, Twitter's blog post from a year or two ago where their number one performance metric is time to first tweet. How long does it take for that tweet at the top of the page to appear? So another thing that we really encourage customers to do is to look at their website, to look at their different pages and identify what are those critical elements, the hero yeah. image or something else in the page. And then with a little bit of JavaScript, you can add, add a timing mark to um, that element, mm. uh, and that comes from the user timing spec. It's standardized now, yeah. and it's being adopted in uh, browsers. Uh, there are some early browsers supporting it. And then if you use that API to um, measure these custom metrics in your page, those get surfaced through Speed Curve as well. Yeah. And so you can track the user experience of those critical design elements in the page. Yeah, so that big image for a product uh, and the other big thing is that you can pull those events through into RUM as well. So it's a, it's a wonderful thing to do is start deciding, hey, what's important to us? And let's instrument that. So go do it.